Blessings everyone, this is Chris Kennel from the RawAdvantage.com, registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw chef. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a simple coconut milk. Let's get into it, Dee Dee, let's get into it. Baby, I like it raw. Raw Advantage likes it raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. All right, today, so we're gonna get into coconut milk. This is a classic base for many different recipes and many different cuisines, such as those from Thailand and India and many other countries. I mean, a lot of tropical countries, of course, where coconuts grow. These are the mature brown coconuts that have the thicker white meat of the coconut. It has a much more deep, rich, coconutty flavor. The younger coconuts that have the thinner jelly those are a little bit sweeter and they can be used as well, but for classic recipes, really deep coconut recipes, I like to use these suckers as it is more traditional. Now in places like Thailand, they actually will press coconuts using a giant press and it's a little bit different, but this method works really, really well. And the only things you're really gonna need is a high powered blender like the Vitamix. If you don't have one like that, then you're gonna need to grate the coconut meat and use a different kind of blender. But this guy is really tough, so that works good. And otherwise, a good nut milk bag and something to squeeze the juice or the milk into, right? Now, I do wanna mention that coconut milk is very, very nutritious. It's high in saturated fats. So it's not the fat source that I would personally use all the time, but it makes a great addition to a raw vegan diet or any kind of diet. It's also really neat to note that Coconut milk is one of the only foods that you can feed to a newborn in lieu of breast milk and it not be rejected and it work well. So I'm not trying to say that it's a good replacement or the best replacement for breast milk, but it can be used as a replacement temporarily. Realistically, there is no replacement for human breast milk. It's the perfect food for a baby, but if we're looking at curries and soups and some delicious sauces, this is an invaluable base and super fun and super delicious. So let's just get into it. Here I have uh, two coconuts that I actually got on sale, the PBR auction out here. They can be a little bit hit or miss sometimes because you know they're from the tropics, they uh, can get moldy and not super good. So that's why I have two here just in case. And I usually do buy them in pairs. And if they are moldy, I bring them back to the store and nine times out of 10, they'll refund them or exchange them. So. That's a good thing to note. To open these up, my favorite way, first I'm gonna keep the plastic on, you'll see why later. My favorite way is to actually take a corkscrew. Yeah, you know, my parents use it for wine, I use it for coconuts. So we're just gonna jab the sharp end into the biggest eyelet. Now you'll notice that there are three eyelets on there. That sheen is kind of making it hard, but you can see that there's three eyelets on there. And the biggest one usually has the biggest soft spot. And that's the one that you want to go for first. So I'm going to take this, try and get it in there. Hope and pray that I can and that it's not horrible effort. If that one doesn't go, then try the next one. There we go. So one of the three, not necessarily the biggest, is going to be easier to get your, your uh, corkscrew in. So I'm just turning that in there. And the beautiful thing is if I just keep on turning, it just pulls all the coconut out and makes a really nice big hole, which is really useful. Because if you just have a nail or something like that, then it can be such a small hole that it takes a long time to get out. Now, before I do anything, I like to take a teeny taste. If it's rotten, you'll know right away and there's a sink over there to spit out. But that one tastes really nice. You can hear the slosh. That's one other thing you want to do when you're selecting them. Get ones that are heavy for their weight and you can hear a slosh because Occasionally, there can just be a really little amount of water in there. So, I'm just gonna turn this upside down and let it drain out. If you're being a little extra fancy, you can poke an extra hole in there, whether you're using a nail and a hammer or trying with this. And that way, this will actually come out a little bit faster. You can just get all medieval with it and just shake it, right? Get that water out. But we're gonna want to get all this water out and hope that we have around a cup, which is fairly common for an average sized coconut. One other tip that I'll let you know too is the difference between how they make it here and in some other places or in kitchens is often they'll actually use really hot or boiling water and that helps to extract more of the fat from the coconut itself. 
So it's better to use it at least room temperature. And sometimes I've actually been known to take this coconut water and warm it up until it's not boiling, but it's nice and warm. Not too hot to handle, but nice and warm. And then do what I'm gonna do with this recipe. And it just makes it a little fattier, a little creamier. So, oh, we, we're doing good. We got a cup and a half. Now, this coconut I'm not gonna use. I'm just gonna use one. This is actually a pretty big amount of coconut milk. And normally what I do is I'd take this coconut and I'd put it in a bag or a pillowcase and bring it outside and just smash it on the ground. Maybe take a rock, smash it, take a hammer, smash it. But because this has this little bag around it, it should contain the shells. I have a, a soft thing and a cutting board to dissipate this. I do not want to break my mom's favorite countertop. And I have a hammer. So I just wanted to try and do this all in front of you. It may or may not work well and if not, We'll see. So, break it. There we go. And you want to break it into at least a few pieces. The more cracks, the easier it's going to be to get all of the, the meat separated from the shell. If it's just cracked in one place, then you're going to have a tougher time. So, breaking it up. So now this is the moment of truth. I'll let you guys know this can be where you breathe heavy and it's really painful or where you just rejoice and you jump around. I've had coconuts that literally took me 15, 20 minutes to separate the, uh, the white from the shell. No matter how hard you try using special tools or spoons or knives, be careful if you use knives. And I've had others that just take like a minute or two. And it's not so bad when you're just using one coconut, but I've also done this using like 25 coconuts, being a chef at different raw food festivals like the Denmark Fruit Festival, or one time when we were at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, we actually did this for like 198 coconuts. And I tell you, when one coconut takes 20 minutes, you just want to pull your hair up. So I've done this a lot. I usually will use either a butter knife or otherwise, sorry to say, but an oyster hucker or a shucker. They're kind of like this, but a little bit thicker, so it's easier to get underneath. You want to make sure that you're always pointing it away and not right into your palm because I've seen people really mess up their hands doing this. You want to get pieces about this big, so let's check that out. That big or smaller, and put them right in there. If you got bigger ones, then you're going to need to chop them up. So I'm being really careful here. And otherwise, if you don't feel safe, even with a butter knife, because you can really cut yourself open with a butter knife, you can use a spoon and you use the bottom part here. So you're using it actually upside down like this and pushing it in there and that way too you can actually push it away and get little bite-sized pieces so let's see this in fast motion because i'm sure you don't want to just see me doing this for the next two to ten minutes this one seems pretty good though i recommend you stay tuned to the end where i'm going to share a couple extra tips and tricks if you notice too, I'm taking the serrated edge away from me so that if it does slip, it's more likely the back of the knife is gonna hit my hand. It's so delicious. Like that, that's what you like. Okay. That's a coconut? No, not for you. This is Dee Dee. Dee Dee, don't show off your bum. Come on. I know it's a cute little fuzzy one, but come on. Sometimes if you just wiggle around the edges, you can get a really big chunk. Look, look at that, boom, boom. Isn't that amazing, kitty? Isn't that amazing? Bada bing, bada boom. So that's the last piece. And this is about a medium average coconut because that took me about seven minutes to do. Thankfully, I fast forwarded it for you. Now here comes the exciting part. You can see here that the water comes up at least three quarters of the way of all these coconut chunks. You know, you can actually have the water up above. So if you wanted, you could add a little bit of warm water on top of that. If you're like halfway, it's going to be kind of tough on the blender and you're going to want to add a little bit of water. But I usually like it at least three quarters of the way and sometimes just covering the coconut if they're in small chunks. So we're going to put this on the Vitamix base, grab the lid, put it on securely. Yeah, 
And then we have the tamper. Now this is one of the things that makes the Vitamix top notch, one of the best blenders in the business. You can check out my link below and grab your own. I've been using Vitamixes for over 17 years now. They're by far my favorite blender. My first one was probably the biggest investment besides my car that I made back in the early 2000s. And that one is still in use. It went to my sister's house for like almost a decade after I had been through with it and traveling. And now it's at my brother's house. And the second one we had, my sister has, and this is the third one in my parents' house. I absolutely love them, and you can get free shipping and good deals, you know. Check it out down below, and also if you subscribe to me, you know, my mailing list down below to get three free ebooks, then you'll be notified first if there's any kind of Vitamix sales or anything like that. So, here we go. We're gonna use this Vitamix. We're gonna start it on a low speed, but pretty quickly turn it on a higher speed, and just go crazy on it, because. If you don't go crazy on it, then it bogs out the motor. And if your motor shuts down, it's not really great for it. So you really want to listen for that noise. You want to turn it on full and then just really try and push the coconut into the blades in every single direction. You're going to see. All right, so that's pretty darn good. I'm being a little bit risky here having this size of a cup. Normally I'd use a bigger bowl, but I really wanted you to be able to see this. This nut milk bag is a pretty damn high quality one, kind of like a uh, almost waxy feeling, kind of really fine nylon. I'll have a link below for some other ones that are really darn good. And I like to put the stitching out, that way there's a little bit less stuff mixed up in there. And we're gonna take this off. Big tips coming after this, guys. Take this off. And put it over the entire top here. I'm gonna try and get all of this out. Now, it can be kind of tough to get out. There we go. If there's just a little bit left in there, I don't mind. But if I can, I just use my hand, scoop in there and get the biggest bits out. There we go, you can see there's just a teeny bit in there, but I'm gonna be making a curry sauce of this later, and I don't mind having a teeny bit of that in there. So now, I just wanna carefully squeeze it into there. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake by showing it to you here. Uh, am I showing it to you? Am I showing it to you? Here, let's move that. Oh God, this is a, this was a mistake. You can see I'm getting some really nice coconut milk out of this now. And with that cup and a half of liquid, I'm gonna be getting a little bit more than that as it pulls some of the liquid from the uh, coconut itself. Normally I'd be giving her double as hard as this, but since I'm squeezing into this little teeny measuring cup, I'm being a little extra careful. Good quality nut milk bag you can actually twist too. This is good rehab for the hand. So there we go, we have about one and two thirds cup now. You know, this stuff you can save, you can feed to animals, you can make crackers out of, you can use as compost. I usually don't use it myself. I find it just tastes a little bit bleh because all the super flavors come out of it. You can also put it back in the blender and add really warm water to it and do a second milking if you want to get you know a little bit lighter flavored coconut broth. Maybe if you're making soup or maybe using it for a bit of a base for a smoothie or something like that. But this first bit here is the creamiest, richest, delicious stuff. Now, I said I was gonna share some really big tips as well. And one of my favorite tips is during this process, when you have the coconut in there with the water, you can also add like, you know, couple carrots chopped up or some celery chopped up or some ginger or anything like that do the same process and then you already have a fixed flavored broth to use for soups or sauces or a whole bunch of other stuff you know this recipe base here is what I used originally for my cocoa butter veggies the, the original cocoa butter veggies eight years ago I think I did it first and from there I've created cocoa butter veggies 2.0 which doesn't use coconut milk because this can be a bit of a process and the 2.0 is just an easier version. And then 3.0, which actually uses carrot juice. So I'll have links for all of those recipes below as well. 
I make a nice Thai soup with uh, carrots and with celery, or sometimes if I'm making like a pad thai or other things, I use carrot or celery or other roots. You could even put beets or anything you want in there to have a different flavored broth. But this is a simple way to make a really nice, tasty, creamy, satisfying, fresh, raw vegan coconut milk and all those tips to make other broths with coconut milk as the base. So I hope this really expands your horizons in the kitchen and gets you a bunch of different cuisines and tasty flavors. If you like this, then you're gonna probably like all of my recipe books. I got eight or nine different ones in my shop. And I also have a sauces book, Naturally Raw Some Sauces, that teaches you how to be a sauce chef. So all the fun links are below. I know I kind of went link crazy here. They say, just give it one call to action. I'm sorry, got lots of calls to action because I got a lot of stuff going on and I want to share it all with you. So I hope you guys like that. If you liked the video, yeah. hit like, subscribe, yeah. comment below if you did or you didn't. And as always, wishing you much. Peace, love, and seasonal fruit. Fresh homemade coconut milk for soups, curries, sauces, and more. Ooh, don't forget to check out my raw recipes playlist in the top left, the video just for you in the top right, subscribe for more videos in the bottom right, and get your three free ebooks in the bottom left. Grab your free raw recipe app, available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, frickin' raw some food combining chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.